What's going on, everybody? Kenan here, hanging out with you. We are uh, coming to you live from the studio. It's a little bit later than normal, but today, if you were following along on Instagram and Facebook, I was out with uh, Crocodile Kyle looking to catch uh, saltwater crocodile, and that didn't happen. Um, we spent a whole day down there at the Everglades Safari uh, Park uh, down there, just off the Tam Miami Trail in the Everglades. The croc was in a very large enclosure, and we weren't able to entice it up with some chicken treats for it to get in the noose so we could bring it home. So today's show here is a little bit later, and I'm going to be talking a little bit about what's normal behavior in your tortoise. Uh, we get so many questions about, is my tortoise sick? What's normal behavior? So I thought I'd do a little, a smaller show today, probably about 15 minutes where we'll get into a little bit of what the normal behavior is for your animal. Because so many people, when you get your tortoise, um, you got to remember these animals have different personalities. Some are very gregarious, they're very outgoing, others are a little bit more shy. So when you get your new animal home and you've set up the enclosure, the first thing you want to do is make sure the enclosure is set up to the specifications of whatever species you're working with, right? So if it's a forest species, you want a lot of canopy, I want to make sure this radiated tortoise doesn't go running off the uh, table here. Uh, if it's a grassland species, you're going to want a lot of uh, areas for it to bask and so on. So it's very important that you make sure that the actual species needs are taken into consideration, okay, whether it's a low humidity or high humidity animal. But the thing that you want to look for and notice with the animal is there's going to be uh, behavioral and daily patterns that the animal will display. It'll probably wake up in the morning when the lights go on and get out there and bask for a little while and then start to explore its enclosure. Um, you're gonna wanna look for curiosity. They're always poking around, they're looking to do things. Um, you wanna make sure that the temperature ranges are correct for them. Uh, depending on the species, you wanna make sure that the ambient temperature, that's the temperature not underneath the heat source or the light source is uh, in a good optimum range so that you can stay active the way they're supposed to. And uh, they also urinate when you lift them off the ground. So be careful about that as well. This little guy is a little bit nervous. I took her out. She was sleeping. And now she's kind of hanging out here inside. And boy, you see, if this were in the wild, let me tell you, folks, look at that. Let me explain something to you. If this were in the wild and we picked up a tortoise like this uh, and it voided the contents of its bladder like that, and then put that animal back down without getting a drink, it could be actually disastrous for the animal because many of these animals come from dry areas where water isn't readily available. And so them doing this, man, look at that. I'm really scared. You know, I'm sorry, sweetheart. We're going to make sure she has a lot of water to drink tomorrow, that's for sure. Um, so basically, they would void the contents of their bladder, and then uh, they could potentially dehydrate. So luckily for her, she lives here where there's plenty of fresh water. She's just a little nervous, I guess, from me lifting her up. But anyhow, folks, there you have live YouTube streaming, and we have a live stream of urine uh, flowing down onto the carpet here. Luckily, it's a carpet intended for that use. My goodness, I'm going to have to get a napkin here in a little bit. But anyway, back to behavior. That was actually normal behavior for a frightened tortoise. They void the contents of their bladder. But you can see how this animal's out of her shell. She's looking around. Now, when I put her down, she's going to walk around everywhere. Uh, I just don't want to admit, like I said, I don't want to make her fall off the top here. But she's active. She's curious. She wants to know where she's at. Same thing should happen with your animals in captivity. Um, you'll see lethargy in tortoises if the temperatures are right, if the food's not right. Um, if you change up their enclosure all the time, some people think, oh, I want to make it more exciting. I'm going to change it up. You know what, guys? Set the enclosure and leave it because tortoises are creatures of habit. They live in smaller ranges. They know where the water supply is. They know where their hiding areas are. They know where the best foods are to eat. So they actually are animals that, you know, don't respond very well to change. And that's why uh, over the course of, you know, natural history out there in the world, turtles and tortoises are in trouble because they don't really adapt quickly to change. They like things to be nice and easy going like they are. Uh, so it's important you set up their enclosure, you make sure that it's just dialed in for their needs. Uh, and then, you know, you get into a rhythm, try and feed the animal at the same time every day. Uh, it should be walking around. If you want to take it out of its enclosure, if you live indoors and you want to take it out and give it some exercise, that's fine, or some outdoor time, 
you guys know from watching the show that I'm all about keeping tortoises outside. Very, very important. Um, I just think it's a, the best way to do it. Now, I know some of you are up north right now, and I know you guys are getting a winter storm. So I know that's not exactly possible, but you have to try and aim for that. Uh, certainly keepers down here in the south, they do it, and they're keeping these animals outside all the time. So very, very important. So let's see. I'm going to go ahead and place this tortoise on the ground. We're going to grab a smaller tortoise. We're going to get one of the special cherry heads here, and they're moving around right now. So I'm going to come right on up to the camera, and you can kind of see this animal right here. This is one of the Darth Maul Hypo Redfoot cherry heads. Uh, very, very beautiful animal. You can see just how pretty it is. Let's go back to the camera. I'll get a close-up over here. Hopefully this tortoise on the ground doesn't unplug me. It's been a crazy day, people. Let me tell you. Let's have a look and see what we can do. We're going to switch to the FaceTime camera so you guys can see this one up close. There you go. So that's a really pretty cherry head right there. Um, Ruby Reptiles asks, what tortoises can you keep inside? I would recommend if you're living up north and you want to keep a tortoise inside to get a smaller species like a Greek, Hermans, Marginated, Russian tortoise. Uh, very, very cool. You know, you want to do that. Um, you know, they are, um, they are what I think are the coolest. And I'm giving a thumbs up to a special friend out there as well. And um, I am uh, just kind of uh, distracted a little bit. What was I talking about? Cherry head tortoises. That's right. So um, these little guys and the ones that you keep indoors are, um, are really important, you know, to keep smaller species indoors. Like I mentioned, um, you know, you want to give them enough space to walk around and do their thing which is also very important that they can do their natural behaviors. So it's, uh, it's something that I think, uh, you know, you guys are going to want to look into. So those smaller species, you know, cherry heads like the one I'm holding right now, they can also be kept indoors. Um, but they are, uh, you know, they're not necessarily, you know, I would consider an indoor tortoise all the time. They don't get as big as like your sulcata or full size red foots, but, you know, again, guys, we're looking to keep things uh, outdoors. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let's see. Yeah, Green Corps wants a radiator tortoise. I hear you, man. Uh, is it possible to visit your place? You're in Sarasota. I'm not open to the public. Uh, lots of insurance concerns and so on. So I try to keep the place uh, off limits in that regard. And I just remembered that I'm sitting on the table here and there's a turtle pee. So I've got a wet butt. At least I wiped up some of it, which is nice. Uh, you know, what are you going to do? Let's go back to the wide shot here. And uh, we're going to answer a few more questions here. Like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter, um, a shorter uh, video. But I want to make sure I got one in. Wait, what did I do here? I, I wanted to make sure I got a video in here today for you guys because, um, like I said, we were out and about. And uh, that's just not fun to, uh, it's, what did I do here? I am totally screwing things up, and that's what I wanted. All right, guys, listen, seriously, a little loony today. Uh, but basically, um, I want to make sure I had a video. So I'm going to answer some questions right now as the tortoises are running all over the house. Um, I also have this little radiated that I want to show you guys, too. So this little guy's just chilling out right here, little radiated tortoise. Um, yeah, man, all sorts of action going on. So it was a pretty intense day today, yeah? We were, we were out and about, but no crocodiles. We did catch a caiman, so you guys can check that out on my Facebook page. I posted a quick video of Jose Novo jumping the caiman. It's a Yakari caiman, really cool animal. Kyle's finally got a male for his two gals, and hopefully he'll be able to breed them. We'll do a story on that for sure. Can tortoises eat bamboo leaves? The kitsune, um, some tortoises do. My Burmese mountain tortoises will actually eat the bamboo uh, as it starts to grow. It's the shoots, the bamboo shoots that come up. Uh, they'll actually eat those. Um, and then, um, you know, that's, uh, that's about it. I have a couple of bamboo plants in those enclosures that just don't get any bigger, and that's because any new shoot that comes up, they eat the shoots. So... Uh, there you have it. Uh, can you import tortoises? Uh, I don't import any animals, uh, Ed Music, um, and I don't export to the Philippines. Um, I'm sorry. I only sell in the continent of the United States. See, I sat on the peak. Um, so everything I do is done here in the United States, um, and I don't get any wild-caught animals to resell. 
any animal that I sell is mine that is hatched here at Camp Kennan um, or a very special circumstance that I know that it's captive bred. Uh, maybe something that I bought from somebody a while back, back had it and then sold it again. Um, but uh, by and large, I only sell what I produce. So right now, I don't have many tortoises available. I know many of you have been emailing me uh, to kind of like buy tortoises from me, but my season starts in January and goes all the way through till September. So uh, definitely come back after Christmas. I'll have some sulcatas hatching. I got some redfoots. I got some leopards. Uh, some elongated tortoise, some really cool tortoises hatching. I did get these baby cherry heads that I showed you on the cherry head video, which is neat. I'm going to hold on to these guys for a couple of weeks and make sure that they're eating and doing well before I send them out. Um, but you can kind of see these little baby cherry heads, really, really beautiful, uh, very variant in their shells too. You can see some, some really cool differences in the shell patterns and colors. I love, love, love cherry heads. Um, just a great, beautiful species uh, of tortoise. Let's see, uh, when will the clothing be for sale in the UK? I hear you, man, we're working on that. We're figuring out the costs of what shipping will be. Uh, we did get women's uh, sizes in and children's sizes in, and we have double XL on all the original uh, shirts in black sand and military green. So we're gonna be throwing up some more, um, we're gonna be throwing up some more uh, stuff on our store with those sizes. Just bear with us. It's been a little crazy around here. And then, um, you know, we'll get it out. We'll get it out to you. So if not for Christmas, you guys will have it immediately after Christmas for that Christmas money if you guys are looking to buy some more shirts. Um, pretty stoked on the support you guys have been giving us with the shirts. We do appreciate it. Let's see. Uh, la, la, da, 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 da. Far asked me, do I keep any snakes? And what's my favorite snake? I like the Timor pythons I have. They're my favorite right now. I have Timor pythons, hog island boas, dumerels boas, one albino Burmese uh, python. And I have, um, what else do I have? I have something else. Ah, a, great, a good old boa constrictor. So I do keep some snakes, but I'm really not, um, you know, I don't do a lot with snakes. I have certain species I like and I, I work with them and I, try and do cool things. Oh, I forgot my carpet pythons. I love those guys. Very cool snakes. Uh, all right, Sky, there's a, I am curious about this. If the tortoise who lays the eggs finds out somebody digging her nest with the egg, does she have some feelings about this, like try to protect her nest or something? Please answer. All right, so check this out. If you look back on the Camp Kennan page, I think it might have almost been a year ago, but I had a female sulcata, my big female sulcata, right? Biggest one. She's about 120 pounds. I did a video on Instagram and on my Camp Kennan page where you actually see her protect her nest. She finished laying, I go in and I start to dig at her nest and she actually rams into me and I fell right over her. Uh, but it was really, really cool to see that um, or to see that kind of behavior. So she was, um, you know, she was really uh, protecting her nest and there's also some, I've seen some protective behavior in uh, the Burmese mountain tortoises because they make a mound similar to a crocodile. So they make a mound and then they, um, they go ahead and, um, you know, just protect it. And, uh, you know, that's what they do. <laughs> so uh, they, they do that as well. But, but many of the other species, guys, they don't. They actually, they kind of uh, just do their own thing. They lay their eggs and go their merry way. And then the babies are on their own when they hatch. So there you have it. Uh, da, 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 da. uh, let's see. Can you give us tips about keeping a leopard gecko? I don't have any leopard geckos and I don't want to speak to leopard geckos because I haven't worked with them too intensely. I, um, so I don't want to give you any bad information, but what I think I'll do is maybe invite a really knowledgeable leopard gecko person, uh, in a future episode of Cam Kennan Live. How do you like that? Maybe we'll have some leopard geckos on and we'll talk a little bit about their care because that's something I'd like to learn about as well, right? So that's a great idea for a, a story in the future. Uh, everyone asks me, Brandon Brown, what type of cactus do I feed my tortoise? This is what I can tell you. This is the best thing I can tell you. It's an Apuntia genus. It's in the genus Apuntia, which is a paddle cactus, okay? But it's the spineless Opuntia or spineless prickly pear. You may want to go to a Latin supermarket because it is actually good for you to eat as well as the tortoises to eat. So if you can go to a Latin supermarket and ask for nopales, N-O-P-A-L-E-S, nopales, then you will be able to um, perhaps purchase a few pads, plant a couple of pads, just stick it right in the dirt in well-drained sandy soil, 
Uh, if you live in the south, you might have to set up a greenhouse up north, uh, and then you'll be able to uh, propagate and reproduce that plant and have a little buffet for your tortoises. And there you go. Have I ever had a Chinese water dragon? If so, can you give me tips on how it should build up his cage? Well, I didn't have a Chinese water dragon. I did have a Filipino sailfin dragon, which is really cool. Big crest, almost looks like a, uh, the Dimetrodon, uh, which is the dinosaur, actually the uh, primitive mammalian type reptile, the Dimetrodon with that sail on its back. The, the sailfin dragon is very similar and it looks really cool, very dinosaurian. And what I would suggest with you know, the water dragons, and again, I'm not a full on uh, dragon expert, but what I did for my sailfin, which behavior is somewhat similar to that animal, is I created more of an arboreal situation. Uh, water dragons and your sailfin dragons sometimes can get really, really flighty, and they feel more secure at height. So it's better to have an enclosure that goes tall rather than an enclosure that goes long. Because if it goes long and they start spazzing out, they can run right into the walls and smash their face. And you see a lot of nose rub and things like that. So what I suggest with arboreal lizards like that, um, and that live over water, is you can create a water tub in the basin and then just have the branches coming out and basking platforms. I would black out the three sides or make, make uh, use, you know, I know ZooMed makes the terrarium cork bark and they make terrarium uh, uh, decorations that you can block out the three sides of the terrarium so there's a viewing only in the front and the other sides are all blacked out so the animal feels secure and it feels like it's on a tree. Um, and that's what I would do. This way there's gonna be less nose rub. Uh, they're gonna feel more secure and that's just basically the way I would do it if I had Chinese water dragons. But I would email a gentleman by the name of Ty Park, find him on Facebook, and watch uh, his Facebook page because Ty is one of the most knowledgeable guys with lizards that I know. So that's my answer to that one. Uh, let's see. Why didn't I show my Indian star tortoise? I don't have any more. I don't have them anymore. Um, they did not do well down here in Florida. So they now live with a friend of mine indoors. I didn't want to mess around with them anymore because to be perfectly honest, guys, they just weren't doing well down here. Very humid. They don't like that humidity. Um, they just weren't doing well. So I got them over to my buddy and now they're doing great and they're reproducing. And uh, so I'm happy about that. See, rather than, you know, watch animals die, I'd rather move them along and therefore, you know, make sure that they are um, in better hands. If you're not doing a good enough job, it's okay to admit it. If you can't learn it fast enough and the animal's in trouble and someone knows better than you, best to get the animal to someone who can really do the, the best job. And also, what have I always said? I always, always say it's best to keep animals that do well in your environment. Uh, it's just the way to go. When I was a young guy in Long Island, New York, sadly, I, I had lizards and things that just didn't do well. And then they, we didn't have the information back in the 80s and early 90s that we have now. And so these animals didn't do well. So that's part of the reason I do this is, is a way to pay back and to really give the knowledge and people can learn from my mistakes and hopefully take that to heart. Let's see, guys. We are doing good. Uh, Junior Vargas wants to know how much for baby cherry heads. They will be 200 plus shipping. Uh, there's not a lot of cherry heads out there right now. They're beautiful animals. So they're 200 plus shipping. Uh, but they're really fantastic. How long did it take for me to build up the camp? The camp is in camp. I, I moved here in 2004 with that intent to kind of make make this place a home uh, for animals. And um, you know, I, uh, I I've been building it up since 2004, and it's still going and changing and evolving. And I suspect that it will continue to evolve as we go. So there you have it. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Do you do a video featuring Kyle's play showing all his animals? Yeah, man, Tony. Tony Madeline, we're going to do more videos. Kyle, you guys got to think of Kyle as basically uh, we are a team, man. Kyle's like we are the inner circle. So I'm always helping him out. He doesn't live far from me. In fact, I was just with him today, as I mentioned earlier. So Kyle's place, and by the way, I got a radiated tortoise running around the house. Um, I was just remembering that, but Kyle's place is evolving too. And there's some big news going to be happening with Kyle. He's going to, uh, we're going to do something big, uh, with him in the, the year to come. Uh, so definitely stay tuned to more episodes of Camp Kennan proper because there's going to be a lot of cool stuff going on with Kyle and his facility. So definitely stick around. I can't let the cat out of the bag yet. 
Uh, let's see, how will I know? This is a good question. SDR Live, when do I know my tortoise is ready to lay? Good question. So what I found with sulcatas and other species of tortoises, mostly sulcatas, they become restless. Uh, if you have seen breeding, um, then you'll know that usually if it's the breeding season for the tortoises, they start, my, my sulcatas will take them as a, for example, they start in September, they start breeding like crazy. And then in October, I start to see egg laying. And usually before the female lays her eggs, she's pacing the fence. She's walking around. She's totally spazzing out. She's not happy. Might, she might dig a little here and then I don't like that. She's like Goldilocks. She's looking for the, just the right spot for her to actually do her thing. So, um, you know, that's, that's what she's up to. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's what I would say, you know, just test nests, pacing, you know, restlessness in your tortoise. And that comes down to behavior guys. It's very important that when you get animals, I don't want to have so many animals that I can't keep tabs on. Them. The biggest thing you can do to help your animal out is when you get it, watch it, watch how the animal behaves. See the different patterns. Notice what the animal does. It's telling you everything you need to know. If the animal's active all the time and all of a sudden it's lethargic, you know something's up. If it's not an environmental factor like, like you know, the temperatures and what they call the circadian rhythms, which is the rhythm of the sun and time and everything that moves through the seasons, these animals are dialed into that as are people. And if you see that animal slowing down, it could be seasonal change. Uh, it could be a dietary change. It could be a keeper error. Uh, so very important for you guys to really, really pay attention to your animals. Okay. You guys know, and they'll tell you everything you need to know. Uh, hey, Ken, thinking about keeping my all dab with rhino iguana, would there be any issues? Daniel S. Um, I've kept my rhino. I keep my rhinos with Greek tortoises. The only issue I can think of is if your al dab is getting large and it's in a confined spot. The Aldabs are big, man. Like they can squash a rhino iguana if the rhino iguana doesn't move quick enough. Other than that, no real issues that I would see. They both live in a drier kind of environment, uh, an island environment. Um, but yeah, you know, depends. I personally wouldn't do it because I'm afraid that the when they get too big, they'd hurt the rhino iguanas. Uh, let's see. Thank you, uh, Josiah Thomas. I appreciate you watching the videos, man. I'm glad you love them all. Um, I don't have a Ben go. I don't have any Herman's tortoises right now. Um, so, you know, there you go. Uh, there, I'm sure some breeders, if you check out Chris Leone from uh, garden state, uh, tortoise, he may have some Herman's tortoises. He's, he's one of the guys that I would recommend checking that out. Uh, let's see. Uh, da -da 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 -da. do I ship out of the U S no, no exporting of, of live animals out of the U S and we're going to get things wrapped up here pretty, pretty quick here. Uh, someone was asking me if I'm thinking about getting, um, you know, if I'm thinking about getting any, any other animals. Not at this time. I'm actually um, lightening my load. Uh, I've been, you know, moving out certain animals that I don't breed too often and getting them to new homes uh, because, you know, it's a lot of work and I got to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, I got things dialed here. So I'm trying to keep things in a nice balance, you know. Uh, but that's it guys. I think we did good here. So behavior. What did we learn? Let's recap. You want to watch your animals. You want to make sure they're acting curious. They're moving around. This goes with all reptiles. Okay. They have little patterns that they do. That's so important for you to check out. So, um, definitely do that. Uh, and watch for the behavior, make sure their environment is dialed in as best you can, uh, for the species you're working with. And that comes from research. Get the environment and habitat ready first, then add the animal, then watch the animal, give it a day or two, possibly even a week or two weeks for a tortoise or any other animal to really settle into its new environment. Okay? So there you have it, guys. A Camp Kennan Live. We went 25 minutes. Honestly, I thought maybe I'd only talk for 15. So as always, you guys keep me entertained with your great questions. I really do appreciate everybody jumping on here. Uh, we're really happy with the way Camp Kennan is growing. T-shirts are available. Go to the Camp Kennan store. Thank you guys. And, uh, well, wait a minute. Am I going to do a show next week? I know Christmas is coming, man. I might have to take a week off. I don't know. Maybe we'll do a Christmas show. Uh, I'm not a, I'm not a big fancy Christmas or holiday guy to be perfectly honest. That's it, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope you're having a great time out there watching the show. I'm having a fun time doing it with you. 
I'll see you later. I got to go find this tortoise that is hightailed it into my kitchen. We'll see you soon. Take care. Bonus video on Sunday. Don't forget.